In this section, we're going to talk about arc length, and we're also going to talk about taking that arc length and revolving it about an axis to create a surface uh, and calculating the area of that surface. So we talked about arc length at the beginning of the year in Chapter 6. And if we recall from that discussion, uh, arc length is, is taking what, you know, something like a flexible measuring, uh, a tape measure, and placing that flexible tape measure along a curved surface and figuring out how long that curved surface is. And um, as we look at this curved surface, we can kind of divide it up into segments of equal length. And then with these segments, we can use Pythagorean's theorem to figure out how long these segments are. So for instance, this segment here is a hypotenuse of this right triangle. This leg is how far we moved over in the x-direction. This leg is how far we moved over in the y-direction. So if we take this squared and this squared and take a square root of it, we can get the length of that hypotenuse. And if we take the limit of that as the distance between the points goes to zero, then, um, then we are basically defining the derivative and, um, and we can calculate the exact value of the length. And so that's out of section 7.4. And so we started out with this Pythagorean theorem. And then from here on, it was algebra. So if you recall this from an earlier, an earlier, this earlier section in, seven, in section 7.4, from here to here is just algebra. Um, so what we did, just to refresh your memory, is we said, well, let's divide by x squared. All I'm going to do is, and the only reason I chose x squared is because um, it'll make this 1, and it'll make this something that looks like dy dx. And so if we divide by x squared, then we've changed the problem unless we also multiply by that same value. So x squared inside the radical is just delta x outside the radical. So this, um, this, these two things undo each other, and we have something that's mathematically equal to what we started with. So this is 1 then. This is the change in y over the change in x, which on an uh, incremental level is the slope. Um, on a differential level or a calculus level, it's the definition of the derivative. And so as we take in this section here, as this is where our, our uh, pre-calculus comes in, right? From this section to this section, we take the limit as the distance between the x values goes to zero, and then we can um, come up with the definition of the derivative. So we're going to use this definition of the derivative then, or this definition of arc length then, to kind of um, go and talk about this definition of arc length when it comes to parametric equations. So I'm going to I'm going to run a, a parallel explanation here. So where last fall we divided by delta x in each case, um, then uh, and that allows us to, to set ourselves up for this Cartesian derivative, this dy dx. In this situation, we want to um, we want to since we're dealing with parametric equations, instead uh, we want to divide by delta t. So we're going to have delta x squared plus delta y squared. And then we're going to end up dividing by delta t squared so we can get a parametric derivative there. And of course, if we divide by delta t inside the radical, excuse me, delta t squared inside the radical, then we're going to have to multiply by delta t outside the radical. And so then if we take that, um, if, we, uh, if we then take that definition here, so that's the definition of, um, of our incremental arc length uh, delta s, um, then we can um, just go ahead and, you know, uh, kind of group this in brackets. We've got delta x uh, over delta t quantity squared plus delta y over delta t quantity squared times outside the radical delta t. And as we take the limit as delta t goes to zero, um, then we can come up with the definition of the derivative. And so in, a, in parametric form then, we have this arc length from a to b, uh, and this incremental arc length ds then ends up being the integral from a to b of 
dx over dt is the um, is the parametric derivative for uh, for the x parametric equation. So we have uh, dx over dt quantity squared plus dy over dt quantity squared um, times dt. And, uh, and so in parametric form, then we have a way to calculate that arc length by looking at the parametric derivatives. And so, um, and this is, this is kind of saying what I just discussed above. This is from section 7.4. Um, this is the transition now into the current section 10.3. Um, and here's the, the parametric derivatives. We can also write it in the derivative form, uh, as you see over here, too. Because uh, we commonly call the x parametric equation f of t and the y parametric equation g of t. So here's an alternate form as to how to, uh, for writing the, uh, the arc. For this set of parametric equations, which when graphed looks like this, so we know it's parabolic, uh, we want to find the arc length from 0 to 1. So when t equals 0, if we kind of think about this, when t equals 0, x equals 0 and y equals negative 1. So we're starting here. And then when t equals 1, x equals 1, and y equals 3 times 1 is 3, minus 1 is 2. So x equals 1, and y equals 2. So we're looking at finding this arc length. Uh, and so let's go ahead and um, get the derivative for each. So um, dx dt looks like uh, the derivative of this. So we're talking about t to, you know, we're talking about this being t to the half. So we're looking at 1 half t to the minus half, which is uh, 1 over 2 square root of t. And then when we look at dy dt, um, taking the derivative of this, we get 3. So working then in the definition um, of the arc length, uh, expression for the arc length, we have to take the square root of the derivative squared. So here's the derivative, 1 over 2 root t squared plus 3 squared dt. So there's the derivative, the expression of the der derivative. So um, And so when we look at this then, um, Squaring uh, top and bottom here, we have 1 over 4t plus 9 uh, dt. So um, just kind of make that a little shorter. Uh, dt. And then the lower and upper bounds are referring to the value for t. We know where this is, a, this is an, in, an integral with respect to t. So our parameters on t are from 0 to 1. And at this point, I would not expect you to do this by hand. I would expect you to do an f int to get the value of, uh, of this um, arc length. And so after we do our f int, then we end up with about 3.249 um, for the arc length. Um, and then I just want to make a note here that we are, um, we are expecting to see this rounded three decimal places um, that's in accordance to uh, College Board that we have this appropriately rounded to three decimal places. Uh, now that we know how to calculate the arc length, what we're going to do is we're going to spin that arc length about an axis. So if we look at this, um, we take this, uh, this arc length here and we spin it about the horizontal axis Trying to match that as best I can. There we go. So if we want to spin this about the horizontal axis, that'd be like flipping this green piece down. So I think I can do that. Um, I can go ahead and flip uh, up to down. And so it would be like putting it right here. And so we create this, I, I would almost call it a vase. Um, you know, if this was the bottom and this was the top. Um, and so we have this surface that comes out towards us and then back into the screen. And, um, and so if we, you know, if we know this arc length, then if we're spinning this, we're really just actor, add, factoring in a factor of 2 pi r, where, um, 
where the radius is this distance. So this radius function here then is the value of the y coordinate. And so that's going to be our y sub t function. And so when we look at the equation then, uh, use number one if revolving about the y axis. Um, so here is our equation then for revolving about the, y, uh, about the x axis. And if you notice this, uh, this function here, g of t, g of t is the, the y function. So maybe I should put g of t up here. Um, so it's that, it's 2 pi r, because that's your radius. So there's your, there's your factor of 2 pi r times the arc length. Um, and then if we look at revolving something about the y axis, so we'll come back up here and look at this picture. Um, so we're going to take this, looks kind of like a quadratic. And so we're going to take this and revolve it about the y-axis. So if I go ahead and flip this left to right, then we're, you know, we're creating this almost this bowl shape here. And um, if we create this bowl shape, then what we're doing is we're saying, well, <clears throat> um, if we're going about this, if this is the axis of revolution, then here is our radius. So this radius is the value of our x-coordinate, right, measured horizontally. So that's going to be our x of t parametric, or as the book likes to define that, that is your f of t. So now we have, the, again, we have this arc length, but this arc length has a factor of 2 pi r or 2 pi f of t in it. And so same arc length, even though we've, we've rotated the axis of revolution, um, because we're, arc length is arc length, it's just how long it is. So here is our y axis, and we can see that we have our 2 pi uh, r here being our factor measured horizontally. So a couple of the examples down here, real basic examples. We know that when we take from 0 to 2, when we take this, I'll call it a curve, but it really is a line, and revolve it around the x-axis, <coughs> that uh, we get a pyramid. So if I go ahead and flip this um, up to down, we're going to end up with a pyramid. And so really, we're talking about the surface area of this pyramid. And if you go back to geometry, you could literally turn this into a geometry problem. So we're talking about um, then the radius here. There's our radius. So we know our radius here is um, g of t. And so to calculate the, um, the uh, surface area here of revolution, we're going to go 2 pi... Uh, our g of t is this, so it's 4 minus 2t times our arc length. And so our arc length, then we have to get the derivative, so our um, x of t is 1, and our y, our derivative, excuse me, our derivative y, y prime t is minus 2, so out here we have 1 squared plus negative 2 squared. And so our surface area here then is 2 pi times the arc length 4 minus 2t of 1 plus 4 square root of 5 dt. Um, I'm just going to simplify this a little bit more. 2 root 5, 4 minus 2t dt. This you could integrate easily by hand, so it would be very reasonable to see something of this level of difficulty on a non-calculator portion of the test. Um, so integrating that by hand, then, um, and plugging in the upper and lower bounds, so we're looking at a value of t from 0 to 2, um, we end up with 2 pi times the square root of 5 times um, this ends up being 4 
And so we end up with 8 pi times the square root of 5 as the surface area of revolution for that first, uh, that upper surface. Um, if we go, if we take the same graph and we go about the y-axis, so now we're um, taking this same, I'll call it a curve again, but we really know it's a line, take that same line and then flip that um, so that it is, ends up being revolved about the y-axis, again, we get a pyramid. So again, we could turn this into geometry. And there's no problem in doing that. If, if, uh, if you, the College Board asks this type of question on an AP exam and you want to turn it into an, a geometry problem, they won't deduct points. They'll, they'll be fine with that. They want you to, to see the easiest way to do things. Um, but you know, just for kicks and giggles here, I'm going to go ahead and do it using calculus. So here is my radius, and so my radius is horizontal, so that's my x of t, or like the book likes to use, my f of t. And so the surface area here then is 2 pi times uh, the f of t, which is uh, the x parametric, which is t. So it's t times the arc length, and we already calculated the arc length here. It's 1 squared plus negative 2 squared. And so this gets really, uh, really pretty simple. I'm just going to kind of cut to the chase here. We know this is the square root of 5, and that's a constant we'll just pull out. So literally, we are just integrating t dt here. And um, so when we, uh, when we integrate and we plug in the upper and lower bounds of 0 to 2, uh, this whole thing ends up being 2. So we end up having 2 pi root 5 times 2, um, which ends up being... 4 root, uh, 4 pi root 5 uh, for the surface area here. So, um, and if you notice, you know, this creates a skinny cone, this creates a real wide cone, so this should have less surface area.